Hi there, Great Twelves, and welcome to today's video in which we are continuing our series on the September Theory Cat exam, um, looking at question number five. Now, I know some of you have reached out to me saying that you have not written the same paper, so please, if you've written a different theory and cat paper, uh, I'll put my email address at the bottom here. It's carlin.hambry at gmail.com. Please do email me those files so that I can do a series just like the one I'm doing now on that paper as well. Remember, we don't have long before it's time for finals. I know you guys just finished off on the um, trials, but our focus now is on finals. Um, so please, if you can send me that, I'll be grateful. I'll do that series, post it so that we have a multitude of resources to be able to help you do your absolute best. So let's get into today's video as we look at question five. So question five had this picture and it was talking about um, networking, uh, internet and network technologies. So in our picture, uh, what we actually see there, we see a diagram of a network with a router and a switch and some computers and a server, um, all these different things. So 5.1 says to us, the computers in a cabled network. Now, what is a cabled network? It's a network that is connected by physical cables. Okay. Um, are all used are used, sorry, by all staff members and the WLAN is used by clients. What is the WLAN? It is the wireless local area network. Is it connected via cables? No, it's not. Okay. Now, what are some of the advantages to that? Well, it means that people can connect um, anywhere with, within the range of that wireless LAN network. So this obviously has great advantages in terms of people being able to connect and disconnect and uh, flexibility of movement, you know, all those type of things. However, your cable network is going to be faster. Your cable network is going to be more stable than your wireless. But that's just beside the, uh, <laughs> the, whole, the whole question here. But it's things that when I look at this question, these are things that already come to mind before I even go into the answers. Okay, so let's look at this 5.1.1. Give one reason why a wireless network <laughs> is more suitable for clients. Look at that. More suitable for clients. Why would it be more suitable? Because they can easily, when they come into the building or into this um, particular area, it's easy for them to connect and disconnect. Okay, they don't have to go and look for a cable to plug in. They can just connect with a wireless. Give one reason why all devices must have a unique IP address. Now, I often uh, tell learners, an IP address, an IP address, sorry, is like your residential address. Um, ideally, only one person is living there. Okay, so it's it's the unique address. So if I say um, my address is number four Main Road, only myself and maybe my immediate family we are staying at number four Main Road. You can't have another family staying there as well because then you're going to have a conflict. An IP address is exactly the same. It's your unique address. On a particular network and even when you go onto the internet it's a unique address that you have the minute there are two devices um, that have the same address we have what we call ip conflicts which means nobody's going to be able to connect to the network or um, connect to the internet so why must they have a unique ip to avoid conflicts to avoid problems on the network to avoid not being able to connect okay so that each and every one has um, a unique address associated to their device. Those are things you need to look at, possible um, answers. 5.1.3, give two possible reasons why clients using the WLAN, a wireless, could experience slow connection speed sometimes. Well, it could be, and I just want to check on the memo because you know sometimes they have um, other answers. It could be that there's too many people connected. It could be that um, you know, people are misusing it. So you might have 10 people connected, but they might all be sitting on Netflix. <laughs> they could all be downloading stuff, watching YouTube. So it's going to use all of that bandwidth. And then there won't be much left for anyone else. The memo mentions uh, other things like being too far away from the router. So you know on your phone when you have that, I'll probably have it up here, um, that little um, icon that indicates, you know, your, your signal strength for your connection. That could be like just on the little dot at the bottom. Um, like I said, too many users. Uh, you could even, even have interferences uh, through buildings. Now, many of you don't realize that where you position your router in your home 
is also very important. If you have a very old house that you live in, and I don't mean old as in like it's falling apart, I mean old as in the physical structure's been there for a while, or it's got very thick walls, then you need to position your router well because otherwise you won't get good signal because of those thick walls. So those are things you need to um, consider as well. 5.2, the LAN in the administration office uses a client server model and provides internet access. Now let's, let's stop there. What is a client server model? I'll probably have a picture up here. Client server model means there is a server, there is a computer. Now, if we look at our picture over there, you will see the server over here. That is the main computer that has all the users, you know, accounts, usernames, passwords. Um, it's got the centralized location of most of the data and clients, in other words, other computers would then access that server to get whatever they need. Hence, client being the ones that's connecting to the server and the server is providing um, the services, things like file sharing, things like sharing printers and internet connection, those type of things. So again, I hope you see where I'm going. I'm looking at the question and, I, and I'm first, when they give me um, the scenario in this case, I first think of all the things I can think of pertaining to the scenario and then I go into the questions. Okay, now look at this, 5.2.1. Name two services that can be provided by an ISP. Now, what is an ISP? It's a internet service provider. What do they do? They provide, they are a company that has a permanent connection to the internet. And for a fee, you can get part of that internet connection as well. So they actually rent out or sell, if I can put it that way, um, internet connections uh, based on what they have. So name two services that can be provided by an ISP besides the connection to the internet. So some of the things they do, I know a lot of them do website hosting, a lot of them do email hosting. Um, they mentioned secure web hosting, which I've mentioned, spam filtering, making sure that all these spam mails, those junk mails don't even come through to your email. And obviously they provide technical support. So that's beside giving you access to the internet. 5.2.2, state two benefits of using an ADSL connection. So again, before I even answer this, what is an ADSL connection? It's gonna be your physical line. So if we, let me see where am I, I don't see, I see a switch on here. Um, oh, okay. So if we look at our picture and you see the router up on top there in the middle over there, okay. So our router, um, that's our physical device. And then there's a physical cable running from your um, you know, wherever you are getting your, your internet through into your house. Okay. So it's a fixed line, which means you can't move it around if you need to. So let's say you move house. Um, yeah, you're going to have to have a whole new connection put in at the new place. So that's what ADSL is before we even go further. So what are some of the benefits of ADSL? We've got a permanent connection. Usually we've got a high speed connection. We've got a stable connection. Um, relatively cheap when using a lot of data. Yes, it's fine. Um, it can be upgraded to various bandwidth packages and it allows for you to use the internet and the telephone at the same time. Now you, you might be thinking, why, why is the memo saying that? Well, without giving my age away, um, I come from an, an era where in order to get onto the internet, you needed to use the telephone line. So if I wanted to connect to the internet, I had to physically plug a telephone cable into the back of my PC, into the telephone jack, and it meant that while I was on the internet, nobody could use the phone. Or when you phoned to the house, it would be engaged, okay? So you can imagine that was problems with my parents, <laughs> you know, and things like that. But that's how the internet started. ADSL came along and said, no, 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 hang on. But we can actually split this line so that you can use the internet and you can use a normal landline uh, phone as well. This is why sometimes when you go for a um, an uh, internet contract, and especially ADSL, they'll they'll tell you, you know, uh, I think especially with with Telcom, they'll tell you, listen, you get so many gigs per month, plus you get you know free calls. So just bear that in mind. Five point two point three, explain the function of the switch as part of the LAN. So I want to make sure you get the correct wording on this. What does a switch do? If we look at the picture of our switch over here, 
you will see what does that switch do. It connects these computers, our administration, it connects it to the server, it allows the router to be connected to um, our server there as well. So what they wanted for two marks was the following. It connects devices to one another. We saw it connects the router, you know, through to the server. It connects all the, the administration computers onto the same network. It does all of that. So for the first mark, it connects devices to one another. Second mark was for and directs traffic between devices. So it directs the traffic or the requests coming from, you know, the client computers going through to the server. So it directs it as to where it needs to go. Please, that's how you're going to get your two marks on there. 5.3, the LAN, what does LAN stand for? Local Area Network. What is a local area network? It is a network that is confined to a specific geographical area. Done. The LAN to be used by the administration staff uses fiber optic cables. Now, I'm going to show you a picture here somewhere <laughs> of a fiber optic cable. But the difference, main difference between fiber optic cable and our normal cabling is that the normal cabling used in a network um, has electric wires or has, you know, physical cables, sorry, not physical cables, physical wires running through. So the data is transmitted over electrical current. However, with fiber optic, you've got glass in the middle and the data is transmitted via light through that glass. So what this means is that fiber optic cable is thinner, it is more fragile, but the speed that you can get, the, the data transfer speed is so much quicker. This is why a lot of people are talking now about having um, fiber optic internet lines, okay? Because they can get a higher amount of speed um, and larger throughput as well. So 5.3.1, again, do you see the way we're doing things? What medium is used by fiber optic cables to transmit the signals? That's exactly what I said now glass fibers so don't say glass please use the term glass fibers light and laser okay you can say any any one of them but i'm telling you now the preferred answer is glass fibers okay that's the first thing then over the page 5.3.2 oh what are we almost done give two reasons why fiber optic cables will be more suitable in a local area network than UTP. So what they wanted from you is the following. First of all, you're going to have less interference from something called EMI. That's electromagnetic interference. That occurs when you have cables that are running too close to one another. You've got cables that are running too close to power sources and the, the electricity. I'm, I'm just going to use very simple terms. Having all those wires running next to one another, the current that's running through these wires and through power sources can actually interfere with the movement of data. Secondly, it's secure and difficult to tap. Okay, It's got a very fast transfer speed and it can cover large distances. Now, the reason they say so is because a normal network cable, your UTP cable, can only be run for a maximum length of 100 meters. So what if the, <laughs> the one building is like 500 meters away from the other? This is where they use fiber optic cables because it's got a much um, longer distance in terms of data transmission. Okay, then 5.4, um, give two disadvantages of FTP technology. Let me just get this here. Um, two disadvantages of FTP technology for the transfer of larger files over the internet. Now, what is FTP? That stands for File Transfer Protocol. And they, these are basically the rules that govern how files are transferred over the internet. So they just wanted two disadvantages. I'm going to go through all of them and you can choose, you know, whatever is best for you um, that you would want to use if it comes up in the finals. Number one, not all organizations have FTP servers. Number two, the transfer process may be more complicated than using normal drag and drop methods. Okay. FTP connections can sometimes become interrupted. Maybe something goes wrong with the internet and it cuts it out. And then you've got to start the whole process from scratch. So let me give you an example. Um, using a website called WeTransfer allows you to transfer very large files. Okay. They operate with a file um, 
server, if, if I can put it that way. So this server that they've got specifically deals with transferring large files and FTP, are the, it's basically the rules that govern how this is actually done. Okay, so grade 12s, that's it for question number five. Again, hope you're finding value in this. Hope it is helping you. And again, don't forget to reach out to me if you have a different paper. I'll go through it, prepare things, and I'll do what I can to help you. Also, don't forget to check out the description, everything that I've got there from the Discord channel, um, you know, to uh, get, you know, booking one-on-one -on -one Zooms with me. But uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. All the best, and I'll see you in our next video.